I don't think so. I think the third quarter is going to be kind of a little bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. oh, you see that already in, uh, in Meralco, Meralco, the first one that came out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the kilowatt hour sales is much lower than mm -hmm. the first two quarters. That's true. And I think, generally speaking, uh, because of the new administration, people are just trying to kind of uh, be accustomed to the way things are. There's some learning curve experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think second quarter or second half is going to be a, a lot slower dodgy. than the first mm -hmm. half. Yeah, that's okay, right. So Coming from that, now a lot of roadblocks have sent investors to the sidelines in the past couple of months. There is, of course, a change in administration domestically, but even externally, there's a whole bunch. There's the U.S. elections, there's the uh, Fed rate hike that hasn't happened, um, there's a slowing China and all of these things. Which of these factors are you closely looking at as the biggest downside pressure? To of the course, market? the biggest downside is really mm -hmm. the interest rates. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the biggest one. If they really increase interest rates in December, that's going to create a lot of liquidity outflow from this region going back. It's going to strengthen the dollar and then weaken the peso. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to follow. So let's assume that we play on that scenario, that it does happen in December. How would you play the market moving forward, like going into 2017? Uh, before that, you have to mm -hmm. sell first, right? <laughs> because okay. when that thing happens, the yeah. market's going to react and it's going to go down. Then it becomes an opportunity for you. But really depends on the, how the third quarter earnings will come out. Uh, it really is going to be data dependent. If earnings really come out as expected or in strong growth or even the GDP mm -hmm. is going to be strong, then might not have to sell anymore. But, but uh, you have to really consider if we're not growing as fast anymore, then we do not command that premium that investors are giving us. So you have to adjust that premium a little bit lower mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, you'll have to look at the way, the way things are moving forward. Okay, so now that said, now we were uh, a few weeks ago when the, when we were breaching like one resistance and support level after the other psychological or actual technical, um, we were asking ourselves a lot of questions. We were also asking a lot of analysts, what level is low enough to give us a valuation that is kind of um, fair to the Philippine market? Because everyone's saying we're overpriced, we're overvalued relative to the, the region as well. So what do you think um, would that take to make us, what index level are, are we looking at to see fair valuations for Philippine stocks? Well, all, all things being equal, meaning mm -hmm. interest rates the yeah. same. Mm -hmm. And so then our growth, yeah. our, growth, our growth is the same, more or less mm -hmm. like near the 7%. Mm -hmm. Then about the 7.3 to 7.4 is the fair. But if that thing change, meaning interest rates go up, mm -hmm. and then our GDP growth slows, mm -hmm. growth slows mm -hmm. you'll have to adjust it accordingly. Because valuation is really relative, mm -hmm. right? Relative yes. to, the, to the way you are, relative to the other markets. So it's really very difficult at this point because mm -hmm. things have, uncertainties have increased, therefore risks have increased. So if you're an investor, you might want to pare down a bit some of your investments. Right now, so if you pare down a little bit, which sectors are still interesting to you at this current point in time, where we're at right now? We're going into November, we're very near, maybe a Fed hike, maybe not. So which sectors are you looking at to yeah. nicely park your cash safely? <laughs> yeah, you have to look at the visibility of earnings. Mm -hmm. If, for example, regardless of what happens, mm -hmm. like if interest rates go up or the economy slows, you're still going to get these earnings coming. Like, particularly like uh, Ayala Land and SM Prime. Mm -hmm. the very visible earnings. You see that coming in, regardless of what's going to happen, then it's going to be safe for you to be invested there. But other than that, other than the ones that are visible, you might want to park your money first in money market. Okay. <laughs> in a money market wow. safe investment and wait for market to go down and come in at the cheaper price. So what, what kind of funds are you still looking at? Still equities? Yes, yes, still definitely equities over, the mm -hmm. over the long term. Over the long term. Short-term traders, I would, I would warn them, uh, maybe, Take, take the money off the table first, short term, because of some, some volatility coming in, maybe in the fourth quarter or in the, even the first quarter next year. And then uh, just come in when, when everything is a little bit clearer. But for the long-term investor, I suggest you just continue buying on a regular basis. Anyway, you're looking at five, 10 years down the road. And I think 10 years down the road, I think we will have a better economy over the long term. Okay, that's a pretty good answer. But let's look at the shorter term. Where do you see the index at year end? I think it can break the 7,300. And, and uh, we're now hovering around the 75, 76. And with all of these discussions that we had, the third quarter earnings and slow down interest rates, I, I think there's going to be room for this thing to, to move down lower to the 7,000 level, even lower. Or even lower. Or even well, lower, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hope you're wrong on that, Marvin. Again, thank you very much on your, all your insights and all your advice for us. Thank you very much, okay. Marvin.